I've created a list of UI libraries, components, and tools that I use in my workflow as a developer. And we're going to go over that list together in this video. So let's jump right in. The first one on the list is Tailwind UI. Tailwind UI is actually a paid product from the Tailwind team, which is basically pre-built or styled components that you can copy paste to your project. For example, here we have these hero section components just click on this code and copy this code into your project. There's no need to install uh, typically anything unless they're using libraries like headless uh, UI, which we're going to talk about in a second, but most of them are just styled components using Tailwind CSS. Now, as I mentioned, this is a paid product, so you have to pay for it to get access to, but they have different type of components for application UI, for example, application shells, layouts, dashboards, headers, footers, and whatnot, or things like specific to e-commerce shops, for example, product reviews, uh, category reviews, product lists, order summaries, and whatnot. Now, as I mentioned, uh, under the hood, they sometimes some of these components actually are using our second UI library on the list, which is headless UI. This is also another library from the Tailwind team, but this one is not paid. This is free, and it gives you a bunch of useful components, things like menu dropdowns, combo boxes, models, switches, popovers, and whatnot. And these components are not styled, so they come in bare bone with the functionality wired up for them to work correctly, uh, but you can style them however you want. And as you can see, these are the list of the components that this library exports. They do also have this transition component, which is useful for actually adding animations to uh, your components. And these components actually tie in really nicely with Tailwind, so you can style them really nicely uh, with Tailwind. There's also extra NPM packages that you can install together with the headless UI that exposes utility classes for your Tailwind to actually know the state of these you know, popovers or dropdowns to know if they're open, if they're active or not, and then style your components dependent on that. So there's, there's different things you can do with this library. It's a free library, you can use it. I've used headless UI components on the projects that I create on YouTube a lot. So you might have already seen me using this library. Now, the next one on the list is actually also from the Tailwind team, which is Hero Icons. These are SVG icons exported as React components, again, from the Tailwind team. E, uh, this is also a free library uh, and if you head to the documentation, you would see it's pretty easy to install the package and also bring in uh, these icons as React components. They also support Tailwind classes, so you can easily style them, size them up or change their colors. Now the variations or the collection of the icons are not extensive. Uh, things like Font Awesome might have more uh, icons or more variations of the icons. Uh, but I often tend to reach out for hero icons if I want to just use a simple icon. It uh, just works perfectly with the React component that comes from the library. Now, the next item on the list is Radix UI or Radix UI. Radix is unstyled, accessible, primitive components for React. It's something similar to headless UI but it's way more extensive in the sense that they have way more components here for you to use. For example, they have accordions, uh, checkboxes, drop-down menus, dialogues, or models that you can use. Uh, now, bare bone out of the box, they're on style, so you can style them however you want. However, they do also have examples of these components actually being styled, so you can also use this as an inspiration or copy these components the way that they're styled here. Uh, they're also supporting Tailwind CSS. Uh, before, they were only using Stitches, which is a CSS in JS library, but now they've also added the support for Tailwind CSS, which is great. If you're using Tailwind, you can just use this primitive so you don't have to build accessible components from the scratch. You can just uh, get the code from Radix and then build on top of it by styling it with Tailwind however you want. Now, the next item on the list is actually something that's built on top of Radix UI, and that's Shad CN UI. This is the styled version 
of Radix or it uses Radix components or the primitives under the hood, but it then styles them. Now, if you head to the components, this is something that you can, you can again copy paste to your code. For example, if I just come down here and select this card component or calendar or the drop down, for example, you can see you get this component. Now you can use this CLI commands, which makes it pretty easy to install a specific component from this library. This is going to go ahead and copy the code for this specific component into your project. It's going to create a component UI library and copy this code there. Now it is going to install Radix UI under the hood because this is actually using Radix UI, but this is a pretty useful tool to just run and get the, comp the, the specific component that you want from this library. You can also go ahead and install this manually if you don't want to run the CLI command by installing Radix UI and then bringing in all the primitives from Radix and then installing them um, with the chat C and UI. But as you can see here, there are different components or basically almost all the components that you can find in Radix UI, you can also find them here uh, with their own specific styling uh, out of the box, which you can just copy into your project. Now the next item on the list is actually a styled UI library. So next UI, which is now also in the second version supports Telvin CSS. So despite Radix UI, this is styled components. It also supports features like theming. So if I go to the first page, if I scroll down to show you, as you can see here, this is components or this uh, page is created with next UI components you can have or enable theming so that with a click of a button or changing the theme using the same components, you can just change the style or the look of your site. This is also a library that I like. Now, prior to version two, they were not supporting Tailwind CSS. I think they're using a Stitches or another CSS in JS library, which depends on runtime JavaScript. Uh, and with this new paradigm of building React applications on top of React server components, uh, which doesn't ship that much JavaScript to the client. CSS in JavaScript libraries that depend on runtime JavaScript in the browser are not very congruent with this new pattern of building React applications. So I can see the shift of all these libraries going to Telvin CSS, which is something that you could just compile at build time. Now, Next UI is another example that they've just adapted to this a new paradigm of building React applications. They're now supporting Tailwind uh, CSS. And this is again a library you can use for style components or if you want to enable theming out of the box. Uh, they do have more features that you can dive into. I'm planning to create a video on the channel about uh, using Next UI to build our application. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. Otherwise, you can just uh, go ahead and explore this on your own. Now, anytime that I want to use simple charts in my application, I use Tremor. This is a lightweight component library for charts. As you can see, they have area charts, bar charts, line charts, and different type of components that you would want to use where you're showing maybe a dashboard for uh, analytics or any type of uh, chart inside your application. So they have these components that you can use. They're also using Tailwind CSS under the hood and you can install the package to be able to use them. They also expose some uh, functionality for you to customize the look and feel or uh, the details of your chart. They also have these blocks uh, which are going to be useful if you want to render a bunch of these charts as a dashboard. For example, these KPI cards are something that you probably have seen on Vercel dashboard. So I believe they're using these components inside your Vercel analytics for your projects. Uh, you're, uh, you, you should be able to see these type of uh, layouts there, these type of blocks and the components that comes from Tremor for simple charts in React. Now, the next library is Sonar. This is actually not a library. This is actually a component for toast notifications in React. So if I click on render a toast here, you can see down there a toast notification. You can have a bunch of toasts and it does come uh, with nice functionality. You can also swipe them out. It also supports mobile touch and swiping. 
which is nice. And it actually ties into uh, the other uh, component that I wanted to introduce, which is wall. This is a drawer or a dialogue or a modal that's also accessible for mobile. So you can also use them in mobile. So these two components are very nice if you actually use them uh, for your mobile. You can see it just changes the way that it behaves. You can change the way it behaves um, on mobile versus desktop. So for example, on desktop, you can have it to open in the middle, just like a regular model would. And then on your mobile, it would just uh, can be a drawer that just comes up, uh, as we can see here, as a drawer on the mobile. Um, again, it's nice and it's responsive. It also supports touch in mobile. So it's good. These two components, they're not libraries. They're more so components. One, the drawer and the other, uh, the toast notification is both from the same person, which I actually find really nice. And the last tool, it's not a UI library. It's actually a tool for you to draw on. Uh, so if you're working on ideas, uh, this is actually my notes from the Next.js 13 course that I created. I'm using this TL Draw site. It allows you to just draw shapes here or map out any ideas. You could share them with your team and collaborate on the same file. At the same time, you can export your files or import different things into it. It's really great. It helps me visualize what I'm trying to kind of explain sometimes in the course or uh, if I'm trying to map out uh, the way that an application it requires to work, having all the features that I would need to reach out when I'm doing these type of diagrams. That's it for the list today, folks. If you found this helpful, please give the video a like. If you have any comments, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.